Hi everyone. So today I want to talk a little bit about um, independent reading um, and like the time kids are going to spend reading on their own. Um, Lillian Katz said the dispositions are caught, not taught. And I do think possibly um, an opportunity in this is to really give our kids some agency and thinking about authoring their own reading lives. Um, so in the last segment, I really talked about sort of creating a virtual classroom library. And then in addition to that, we're gonna need to think about um, sort of virtual independent reading bags or stacks for our kids. Now for some kids, we may not have to be thinking as deeply as others. Um, some of our kiddos are gonna be able to pick right from the baskets we make, but we all know we have some of our kids who at this point of the year, they've worked really hard and extended practice with effective and efficient um, reading where both the accuracy and the comprehension feels easy and good um, is probably not only going to be a relief for them and a place to find refuge um, and hopefully some entertainment and peace, but it's also going to help them really grow as readers. The research shows just how much our kids could grow if we got them reading text they can read for 10 minutes more a day than what they typically read. So. In the beginning, we could start off at that classroom library. Um, as I showed, some are audio and some they're reading. So I think getting everybody started that way. And then, um, at least for me, my recommendation and in, in the educators I'm partnering with is let's get to some of those kids we're most concerned about first um, in terms of access and in terms of um, matching them to the right books. And let's sort of create um, an additional basket um, in our virtual classroom library for them to choose books to build their stack. We may eventually do that for all of our readers, um, but I definitely want to make sure that we're doing that for some of our friends who aren't probably getting the supports that they typically would be getting at school. At least we need to make sure we're getting them access to text that they can read with ease. Um, so let me show you what I've been playing with and what I'm thinking about a little bit. Um, so again, I think, you know, as you play with um, whatever resources you're choosing to use digitally um, and whatever platforms you're using, this may look slightly different, but I'm going to show it um, in a Google Doc and I'm going to show it with um, I'm using a lot of like Pioneer Valley, Benchmark, Epic. Um, I will share in this post um, a Pinterest board I made that has lots of um, places uh, that you can go to find free digital resources for your kids, um, resources where they can read it, resources where it's a video read to them, and resources where it's audio. It doesn't matter. Let's just get kids interacting with text as much as they can. So in terms of virtual access, right, in addition to the virtual classroom library, uh, which I showed again in the last segment, right, that looked something like this, um, in addition to this, kids could be picking one or two books in their stack from this library. Um, we could put in different books in this library that represent a range of texts for our kids. And or we could also start to think about um, a digital bin for a group of kids. So for example, I, I made this for kids who are, you know, sort of beginning first grade-ish somewhere between a D and F complexity-ish. So I'm not leveling kids, but I'm thinking about the type of text that they can access easily. I'm not thinking of making these by level. I do think a band of complexity is perfectly fine for our kids. I'm not worried about kids reading books that are easy for them. Um, and I'm not worried about them reading some books that are a little bit harder for them. I wanna find sort of a, a happy medium for them to find some choices that will work for them. So again, within your teaching team or your school or district, you can decide how you want to make this happen. Um, I just, I kind of went with this. Um, I probably would make one um, that was A to D-ish for all of K, because I want to have lots of a range there. Um, or there may be some kids in K where I'm sticking with wordless books and read alouds, which I think is perfectly fine too, depending on where you left them. And then you might have something for the second half 
of first and then into second. And then once you're into third, I think it would really be particular kids for whom you may be doing this. Again, you know your kids best. But what I, I played with um, was sort of a virtual build your bag. Um, so if on a certain day of the week, your kids used to build their bags, um, and a lot of uh, teachers I get the privilege to partner with, um, we have different kids on each day of the week build their bags. So on Monday, some kids do, on Tuesday, some kids do. You could keep that same um, sort of system and structure happening virtually. It also would allow you to sort of check in with kids on the day after they built their bag, um, you know, just check in with them to see what books they picked. Then, um, or you could just leave it open for kids to do it as they want throughout the week. That's totally up to you. But really asking kids once a week to kind of log on and to sort of think about what they want to read. Um, so each day you could make sort of a checklist. I put, you know, choose four books to read by yourself. Read two books to someone. It could even be a stuffed animal or a pet or someone on the phone or a Google Hangout. And then listen to one book. Again, this is a sample. You could adjust this depending on your kids. I happen to have level D through F. If this is an upper grade one, they're not gonna read four books, right? So you would have to adjust this to meet the developmental needs of your kids. You know what you were having kids do, so you'll be able to adjust this to match easily what your kids were doing. You may also, if you're teaching K or one, encourage kids to reread books. So they may reread two books that they loved. They may read two new books. Then they may read two books to someone, right? So uh, lots of different options. But again, what I tried to do here was go into some of the um, publishers that are out there that are, are uh, again, because I'm talking about levels D through F right now, they are um, providing some text complexities that might be hard for families to get a hold of. Um, so Pioneer Valley, Benchmark, um, Unite Literacy, Epic, Time for Kids. Um, there's a few um, bunch out there that are actually giving access to um, more leveled type text. So kids who need to continue to read this type of text have access to that. So for example, if this were my bag um, and I was gonna build it and I wanted to think about some books for independent reading, again, I can kind of click on this. And I put a few samples in here. Obviously, we would have lots more in here, but I just wanted to show what it might look like. Um, so this book, Firefighters, um, is from Unite for Literacy. So if someone would click on it, you'd have to be logged in. And so kids will need to know, have to know you have to be logged in for this to work. If you're not logged in, it will ask you to log in. And from what we can tell, it will still take you there. You could read this or you could have it read to you. You can also have it read to you or you can read it in other languages. Um, right, so you can see this, I had picked English in this, but your narration, um, you could put different interfaces, you could put in English or Spanish for this particular book. So that could be a choice for you, um, for some of your kids. Sorry, trying to find. Um, so that one was from Unite for Literacy. Um, this is also, I did a joke book from Unite for Literacy. Um, this is from Benchmark Readers. Right, so you can see it's taking me to a book called Visitors for Goldilocks. Um, kids can, again, either listen to it or read it. They have a choice um, in thinking about which way they prefer to do that. I think A Hungry Fox is also Benchmark, and these were all Unite for Literacy. There are lots of, you can also use Pioneer. I'm gonna send you, I'll put a link in this um, blog post that has all those different options. Also, if kids, you wanna put in books for them to read to someone in their family, to a stuffed animal, to other ones, you could be moving last week's books into buddy reading, right? So you could begin to do that. You could put buddy reading, right? because this might be something they're going to read to someone when they feel strong with that, when they feel good with that. You could have kids pick their favorite from one week and move them over into buddy reading. Um, they could actually buddy read if you could figure it out with, you know, an older grade level. 
you could try to make that happen. I'm not sure whether that's possible, um, but I was more thinking about just getting interaction. If there's someone they know in their life, if there's someone they could make a phone call to, a neighbor or a grandparent, not an uncle, a cousin, and read a book that they feel strong about. So what I'm playing with is next week, the books that were in this week at independent reading, I'm going to move those into buddy reading so that kids see like, okay, which ones were I comfortable with? And we're going to talk to them about picking one that you feel like more of an expert on that you could read to someone. And then they'll have new books in their independent reading. Um, so again, this one is, let's see if I can show this one. Um, so this one from Pioneer Valley is a PDF. So I wanted to show like sometimes you could kids could read it this way. They have a few books that are um, done as a PDF that you can read that I just think are fun. Um, so that's one way that you can do it. And they also have some that kids can read um, on their own. And I'll show you what theirs look like. So this is one that's from their digital collection um, that kids can read like this. All right, look how excited they're going to be. To read these books right it's so exciting so you know one of the things i'm thinking about is once we have our virtual classroom library is like how do we give kids some agency and to think about how to plan their time and author their own reading life so giving them some options to read on their own moving those options the next week into books that they could read to someone or to something in their home and then the last is is really encouraging them to listen to reading we may not be able to do a read aloud with our kids every day, or kids may not be able to join our live read aloud every day. So you can video the read alouds you're doing for your class and you could put them right in here. You could have um, someone in your school, we're having um, music teachers, phys ed teachers, um, people who typically um, are making them food um, and they get to see people, the school nurse, the crossing guard, people who are typically in their lives um, recording books for kids. Um, and that would be a beautiful thing to put in here so they could see some faces that they haven't seen and probably miss. You could ask families, um, if you have some families who you think may do this, um, your teaching team could do this. The teacher of the people you tip, the kids you buddy read with could do this. I've also put in some that you can find online. Um, there are lots. So Leon Lowe um, has a YouTube page. Um, so I've, I've linked to that where kids can go. I linked to one particular story here, but there's lots of read aloud options there. A lot of own voice authors. Um, so we can make sure that our kids are getting, you know, quality books and also getting representation of our world um, and the books that we're providing for them. So I'm so thankful to Leon Lowe for doing that. Um, also story online. Oh, it's down at the moment. See, I guess these things happen. Well, we'll try again in a minute, but it seems to be down. And this one is also story online. So let's see if it's up now. Nope, still down. Um, hopefully, but that may happen to your kids. So it's part of why I'm trying to put more than one um, publisher, because what you want to do is make sure that kids are going to have access to be able to do that. Um, it seems like they are doing some debugging. Um, again, not sure why, but you can see, hopefully that would be there and that link might work. I'll try it this time and see if it does. Nope, but I'm not gonna retape. I've learned that. And you can't retape either. So sometimes this will happen. So we'll figure out why that happened. Um, so just to sort of recap, once you have your virtual library ready, really thinking about what kinds of books that they want, putting in a mix of books they can read, a mix of books they can listen to, a mix of books they can watch someone read aloud, digital videos, infographics, images, whatever you typically would put in um, a library basket, I think would be great to put in there. In addition, depending on the grade level you teach and your kids, you might also wanna have an additional section to your virtual classroom library, which would be books that would be matched to those particular readers in terms of interest and in terms of complexity. This happens to be a sample I did for kids who are reading a complexity somewhere in the range of D to F-ish. And I'm trying to think about books that they would read on their own, books they then would read to someone. We might think about moving those books from independent reading into buddy reading the next week, and then also having some books that kids can read to themselves. 
You may want to make a checklist for kids to think about what might feel good for them on a particular week. You could talk to kids about making that themselves, sort of a DIY schedule of what they're going to do on one of your lessons, or you could just put it right here. You could have you know, six or seven kids all accessing this same digital bin because that's what's right for them. So I hope this is helpful. Um, can't wait to see what you try and how you make it work. Um, just want to make sure we get our kids following what research shows us, if we can get them reading what they can read, what they want to read, what they're engaged with, and giving them some agency, um, really helping kids um, grow themselves um, and grow their reading lives. So thanks, everyone.